Um, who is there? Um, is um, is Kajia there? Hello. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to our Independence Day lecture. We will begin anytime from now. So by 11 o'clock on the dot, we will start. Thank you so much for joining us. And in little time from now, we will start. Thank you so much for joining us. Invite your friends, share this on your WhatsApp stories, share it on your Instagram, and of course, all social media platforms. We're gonna start any moment from now. Once again, thank you for joining the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section for her Independence Day lecture. Welcome, welcome. We start a few minutes from now. Thank you. Uh, is somebody hearing me? Yes, yes, we are hearing you, sir. Okay, I don't have a program. How much time do I have to speak? I'm the guest speaker. No. Okay, let me more get back to you privately, sir. Hello, boss. I want to be able to pace myself. I think I discussed with Haji, uh, I was supposed to have at least 45 minutes. I hope, yes, that's, I hope that's still the case. Yes, yes, boss. Yes, okay, because I, yeah, I don't like to stop abruptly. Well, uh, kindly on share your screen. We want to sh share the, uh, the program of events. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Let's on share it. <clears throat> No. Um. I won't see it. <clears throat> Is it okay?
Okay, I think I see your screen now. Your Excellencies, very distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the Independence Day Lecture, a virtual summit put together by the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section, of course, to celebrate Nigeria at 60. I want to say a very warm welcome to everybody who has joined us here today to celebrate Nigeria at 60. Of course, I want to know how well you love Nigeria. So please quickly, before I head over to recognizing some very respectful dignitaries that have joined us here this morning, please go to the chat section and tell us one thing you love about Nigeria. Just go to the chat section of this live webinar and drop one thing you love about Nigeria. I want to read it out so that we know how much we love Nigeria. Of course, today's theme is Nigeria as the energy hub of Africa, assessing its feasibility in the next 50 years. So we want to know how well you love Nigeria before we discuss about this all important and very necessary topic. So right now I'll be going to the chat sections to know how much you love about Nigeria. Of course, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are welcome. You're very much welcome to our Independence Day Lecture. I go by the name of Ofono no Akpan, and of course, it is my pleasure to save as your master of ceremony for this live webinar. So very quickly, I'm gonna read about what you say you love about Nigeria. And after this, I will quickly recognize some dignitaries that have joined us here today. I see our programs chair, Amina Damadami. She says she loves Nigeria for its rich culture and diversity. Amazing. My country is blessed 
in all fronts. Thank you, Morgan Leo Akpan, and welcome. Chika Ukwe says, I love the passionate and optimistic spirit of we Nigerians. Thank you, Chika Ukwe. Okay, Honor 20 says, I love Nigerians because of our resilient spirit. Of course, yes, Nigeria is really, really, Nigerians are really resilient in everything they do. Yes, yes, yes. Keep dropping the comment. I want to know why you love Nigeria. Your Excellencies, very distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, you're once again welcome to the Independence Day lecture of the SPE. Abuja session. I see Ogona Oyere. I love the can do spirit of Nigerians. Amazing, amazing. The can do spirit of Nigerians. Yes, yes, I love that. I love that. Keep dropping it. Dr. Sunday Kanshi, of course, a moderator for today, have said Nigerians are a very sociable and kind people. Wow, 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 wow. Samsung Galaxy S78 says, Nigeria's cultural diversity is awesome, amazing. Yes, I agree with you that our cultural diversity from the Igbos to the Yorubas, to the Ibibios, to the Hausas, to the Fulanis, and of course, all Nigerians, our diversity is awesome. Abubaka Musa says, I love Nigeria because we are hardworking and committed to doing good. Amazing, Abubaka Musa. Najul Bali says, is proud of my country as the most popular. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. Of course, here today, I like it and of course, our moderator for yesterday, Dr. Engineer. She says, Nigerians are confident people. I agree with you, ma'am, on that. Aris, the one and only section chair of SBA Abuja section, he says the achievement will of Nigerians, irrespective of their diaspora, love still suffices. Thank you so much, section chair. And of course, we have Ifanyi Davis, who says Nigerians are very welcoming to strangers. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Very quickly, I will recognize some dignitaries that have joined us here today to grace this event. Okay. Your Excellencies, very distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're welcome to the Independence Day Lecture and Virtual Summit put together by the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja Section as part of its activities to celebrate Nigeria at 60. Very quickly, permit me to recognize some very distinguished personalities that have joined us this morning to grace this event. Of course, we have here the Director and the CEO of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Of course, he's gonna be one of our very key guest lecturers today. Please help me welcome Engineer Awalu Saki. Thank you so much for joining us here today, sir. Please, as I recognize dignitaries, you can also show some digital appreciation in the chat box. Just drop it in the chat box, some emojis. We would love to see your digital appreciation. Of course, I want to welcome the Director General of the Energy Commission, Professor Eli Bala. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Professor. I want to say a warm welcome to Professor Mosto Onuha. Of course, our um, our key, uh, one of our lecturers today. And of course, I saw him earlier on today. Thank you so much, Professor Mosto Onoa. We really, really welcome you for joining us here today. I want to say one welcome to Zopcon Medukri, in the person of Ibrahim Siruma. Thank you for joining us here today, sir. And of course, I want to say a very, very, very warm welcome to the section chairman of SP Abuja section, a man who is a role model to so many young people. Thank you so much for joining us, the one and only Mr. Aristotle Emezi, the man in charge and the man we love so much in SP Abuja section. Thank you so much, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, as I keep getting names who have joined us here today, I will keep recognizing them. Thank you once again for joining us today for our Independence Day Lecture, which is on the theme Nigeria as the energy hub of 
Africa. Distinguished invited guests, of course, we have to respect the fatherland Nigeria, especially as we are recognizing it and celebrating it at 60 years. So we would be singing the national anthem. So at this juncture, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, help me sing and join along as the host for this event leads us in the national anthem. Thank you so much, Rume, as lead us in that. The national anthem, please. God bless, God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, very distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're welcome to the Independence Day Lecture, a virtual summit put together by the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section. Of course, we are here to celebrate Nigeria at 60. You would agree with me that Nigeria is the largest economy in sub-Saharan Africa and has vast energy resources with the potential to become a net exporter of energy products across Africa. I should also inform you that as at um, January 2019, the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, reported that Nigerians' proven gas reserve was 200.79 trillion cubic feet and about 600 trillion cubic feet on proven reserve. These statistics by the DPR unarguably makes us the country with the largest natural gas reserve on the continent and the ninth largest in the world. It therefore means that the government and relevant stakeholders must be very deliberate in the formulation of implementation of policies and programs to fit that status quo. And today's theme focuses on the topic, Nigeria as the energy hub for Africa, assessing its feasibility in the next 50 years. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it may interest you to know that here in this webinar, we have highly intelligent speakers who would do justice the theme I just mentioned some minutes ago. And it is my pleasure to welcome, of course, the moderator of this event, who will do justice to recognizing all the dignitaries and, of course, the opening speech um, personality and, of course, other personalities throughout this event. So, my ladies and gentlemen, please um, help me welcome the moderator for today's event, who is an oil and gas consultant and academic with over 10 years of experience. He holds a BNG in chemical engineering, a master's in process engineering from Cranfield University. 
He is a senior lecturer and head of department, Petroleum and Gas Engineering Department, Bayes University of Nigeria, where he teaches and researches on natural gas engineering, hydrocarbon metering allocation. He is the founder of Flessian and Company Limited, a research Upon meet yourself or meet yourself. Okay, Your Excellencies, very distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, please help me welcome the moderator for today's event, the HOD Petroleum and Gas Engineering Department of Petroleum Engineering Base University, Abuja, the one and only, the amazing Dr. Sunday Kanshu. Thank you so much, Dr. Sunday. Of course, the speaking stage is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Akpan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, you are highly welcome to uh, today's webinar, um, which is a very important uh, webinar uh, in the series of all the celebration for Nigerian independence. Um, without wasting much time, uh, I would like to invite uh, Engineer Kalu, who uh, we welcome our dignitaries uh, by virtue of giving a welcome remark. Um, if Kalu, Kalu, if you are there, please, uh, the stage is yours for your welcome remark. Thank you. Dina are you on the webinar, please? While we are waiting for Engineer Kalu, who will give um, the welcome remark. Uh, I want to specially recognize the presence of Engineer Baka Babs. Engineer Baka Babs is the Zona Operations Controller, uh, DPR Abuja. Uh, you are welcome, sir. While we're still waiting for Gina Kalu, ladies and gentlemen, I want to inform you all that um, our keynote speaker, Professor Ibe, is here. Uh, our distinguished speakers, um, we have Engineer Awalsaki, the director and CEO of DPR is here. Uh, we have uh, Professor Mostos Noah, who is going to give us uh, a sound speech on uh, technical area is also here. Uh, please, um, we're still waiting for Engineer Kalu for your opening remark. Thank you. Uh, we're sorry, uh, it appears we're having some challenges uh, connecting 
um, Idina Kalu, uh, but we're going to sort that out very quickly. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we appreciate you. We thank you for your patience. Um, don't forget today, we will be discussing the theme of this webinar, this lecture uh, organized by SPE Abuja section. Um, SPE is Society for Petroleum Engineers. Uh, the discussion, the key discussion today is on Nigeria as the energy hub for Africa, assessing its feasibility in the next 50 years. We have very distinguished speakers today. We have our very, very distinguished uh, professor wow. Chidi Ibe, a well-known professor. Uh, we have our sounds, vibrant director and CEO, Department of Petroleum Resources, Engineer Awa, Awa Lusarki. Uh, we have a very, very distinguished um, professor who have achieved a lot in the petroleum industry, has done a lot for the oil and gas industry in Nigeria and indeed in Africa. Uh, professor, professor Emeritus Kalu Mostos Onoha, uh, professor of uh, geology from uh, the University of Nigeria and Suka. Um, while we are still waiting for um, Kalu for his opening remarks, that is going to be sorted very soon. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Moderator. I know you'll be back uh, once uh, Engineer Kalu is ready for his opening remarks. Okay, um, distinguished invited guest, let's just engage you. Let's just engage you. A very quick announcement. The very first of the announcement is please do not social distance with your device. Of course, like I said earlier on, we have so many reputable lecturers who will give us amazing lectures today. So please do not social distance with your device. Next, you advise that please you should, you should please leave your microphone on mute so that you don't um, interfere and um, disturb other participants during the lecture. So please, we advise that please you leave your microphone on mute. And finally, the chat box is very much available. Please kindly feel free to drop all of your comments, all of your important takeaways, all of your um, your suggestions as we progress through from the keynote address and to all that parts of this event. Kindly make good use of the chat box. And speaking about the chat box, Modesto, is, is he ready? Is he ready? Is he ready, sir? Yes, uh, yes, please. He's ready. Okay, Modesto, yes. please take over. Ladies and gentlemen, um, at this juncture, how, may you permit me to welcome the chairman, SP Abuja section, in person of Aristotle John Emeze, uh, who is uh, standing in for Gina Kalu uh, to give us his welcome remark. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your questions. Thank you. Aristotle, the stage is yours. Hello, can anyone hear me? Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, Aristotle, I can hear you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, uh, distinguished guests. Um, this is another very exciting uh, day for us. Uh, and uh, we are hoping to make the best use of this day uh, to increase our capacity, both in knowledge and um, otherwise. So uh, it's my joy to welcome everyone participating in today's webinar. Uh, from our keynote speakers, our guest speakers, 
uh, Modrito himself and uh, the entire Section 199 um, members. It gives me very great joy today to actually uh, speak to this um, opening remark and to the very catchy you know, title, Nigeria as an energy hub for Africa, you know, assessing its feasibility in the next 50 years, you know, to uh, be living up to its uh, responsibility or its thought or its will as an energy hub. Okay, all of us know what a hub means, you know, hub is like a center of activity that coordinates, you know, the working of every other part of the activity. And that's, that's a very, that's a very great, great responsibility. And then uh, Nigeria being thought of having that responsibility is actually a very, very immense thing that needs and requires every, all hands on deck from all facets of um, Nigerian activity, from oil and gas, from science and technology, for finance, to uh, the law, to just name it, even the politics, you know, involved in all of it. Because, I mean, being a hub is not just because you can do the DYDX. It goes beyond the YDX, you know, there, there's a political formula as well to it, the economic formula to it. There's uh, the, the, the statutory formula that has to do with the law uh, of the land and then a, a lot of other activities that even mingles into the laws that are guiding and binding African uni Union as, as a common entity. So it's a very huge um, activity that I pray that after, you know, all the, all the, all the speakers today and the panelists who speak on it, will be able to like, you know, take something away from it and actually use it to like look into the future of where we, um, uh, of, of the enormous responsibility that we place on our shoulders and how we can begin the work, you know, to, 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 to walk the talk, to get to our destination. So with this, I really welcome everyone. I, and it's gonna be a very exciting moment. Trust me, it's really gonna be. And uh, is what we look forward to like doing, you know, a part two of this in, in, in a larger audience and a larger capacity. Thank you very much and welcome all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Aristotle, the chairman, SP Abuja session. Thank you for your opening remark on behalf of Engineer Kalu. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are getting there, reaching the most important aspect of this event. Um, at this point, um, I want to introduce and also uh, present to you our uh, keynote speaker. But before that, ladies and gentlemen, before our keynote speaker, Professor Chidi Ebert takes uh, the virtual stage for his presentation, may I crave your indulgence to read his profile. Professor Chidi Ebert graduated in 1974 with uh, high honors in geology from Nigeria from the University of Nigeria in Suka, where he was a German academic exchange scholar. He joined the Petroleum Engineering Department of Shell BP Petroleum Development uh, Company, Nigeria Limited, and trained and worked as a well site petroleum engineer, as well as a uh, production and reservoir geologist. He was elected as member of the American Society of Petroleum Engineers in, 19, in December 1977. He left for the United Kingdom and earned in 1980 a PhD and DIC diplomas from the Laurier School of Mines, Imperial College of Science and Technology in London, specializing in dynamics of petroleum formation and occurrence. He holds other specializations in energy management, environmental sciences, oceanography, and the blue economy, and is widely published and consulted. Included in his work experience is service as United Nations technocrat and diplomat spanning UNEP, UNESCO, and UNIDO. Back home, he has served in the Alia as university pro-chancellor, pro chairman of presidential visitation panel of federal universities, as well as chairman of the national panel of experts of the House of Representatives Committee on Climate Change. Um, a contemporary, he is a contemporary university teacher, both at, at home and abroad. He was appointed a National Universities Commission Distinguished Scholar in the diaspora in 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Iber is a fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Science 
ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, permit me to invite Professor Ibe to proceed with his presentation entitled Nigeria as the Energy Hub of Africa, assessing its feasibility in the next 50 years. Professor Ibe, the stage is yours. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Good morning, uh, members of the um, Society of Petroleum Engineers, Abuja section, I suppose, um, other petroleum engineers, um, uh, both at home here in Nigeria and abroad are listening in. Uh, thanks for having me as your honored guest speaker on this special occasion of uh, the 60th uh, anniversary of uh, Nigeria's independence. I'm really glad to be in your company. I do have the privilege, as I understand it, to share the platform, even if it's virtual, with um, three very distinguished um, speakers who are Nigerians. Uh, Professor Kalu Mosto Onoha, who among other things is the president of the uh, Nigerian Academy of Science. Uh, we have the indefatigable uh, director, CEO of um, the DPR, uh, engineer Hawalu. And then we have also as the moderator for this occasion, Dr. Sunday Kansho. So it's really a privilege to share the podium or the platform with these uh, distinguished uh, people. The topic is Nigeria as energy hub for Africa. And there's a question attached to it. I thought there was an inevitability about it. But then the framers of the thing added a question to it. Is it feasible in 50 years? So before I get into that, I would like to usually um, take my um, disclaimer that the contents of this lecture have been drawn from several open sources, including the internet, uh, and have been combined with the speaker's uh, personal experiences in this very broad field in order to produce this text for public discourse only. And so no originality is necessarily claimed. I have an additional disclaimer which is peculiar because this is uh, uh, an Independence Day celebration. And in particular, the diamond uh, edition of this celebration. And I wish to take the advantage to say that nothing that I will put forward in the course of this address will be used against me. I didn't discuss this with the, um, <laughs> with the organizers of this conference. And so I would say, help me God, and we should be on our way. Now, Hajir engineer Amina Damadami was my um, student at the International Institute for Petroleum and Energy uh, Law and Policy. Um, in the course of taking yet another master's. I don't know why she keep collecting all these master's degrees. Maybe she will put some on sale someday. But she was my student and um, she thought she heard very interesting things I had to say, particularly in the field of energy security management. And they bowled me up to the um, uh, Society of Petroleum Engineers uh, Council, um, and that resulted in my given 
the um, Oloibri lecture uh, for 2019 on April 25th. It was a joyous occasion. So when she called me uh, about a month ago, she had just finished listening to a, a webinar in which um, I was the um, guest speaker. Um, and she said to me rather innocently, sir, do you think that Nigeria with all its prospects um, can be the her, the energy her for Africa and maybe beyond? And is that feasible within the next 50 years? Well, you know, once a teacher, always a teacher. I turned it round to, to Hajia Amina and I said, Hajia, what do you think? Can Nigeria actually be the hub with all this seeming confusion that we have around our petroleum and energy scene? She said, yes, we can. And the next thing was an invitation to do this lecture. Last year, I asked her not to come back again, um, but that was a mistake because those who know Hajia will be the first to confess that once it is for a good cause, Hajia would always come back. I asked her not to come back because as um, an independent uh, expert and consultant, you don't want to give too many free you know, advice or else you will starve. But Hajia came back and came back resolutely, believing in the theme of this conference, yes, we can. Now, when you focus on the word can, I do have, um, for the avoidance of doubt, I do have 45 minutes to um, pontificate on this um, particular theme. And I intend to use them up. Um, when you look at the word can, it means potential. When you say you can do something, you have the potential to do it. Other ways of expressing can is the inherent capacity for coming into being. So it's not there yet, but you know, it can come into being at any time, it can explode. The second meaning is existing in possibility. And I seem to like that particular word, possibility. Now it has to go to probability and then to reality. Of course, you know the sequence. The third meaning is expected to become or to be. It gets better all the time. And the fourth one is can means something in prospect. So if you're talking about prospect and you're talking about possibility and you're talking about potential, but we dealing with reality. So you, you, you need necessarily to turn the question around. Will we, or even better still, shall we? Because when you put in the shell, there's an imperative about that question. And I like to seek refuge like the French do. When you ask them a potentially difficult question, they tell you ça dépend which means it depends. So shall we be the energy hub? Will we be the energy hub within the next 50 years in Africa and beyond? Sadipon, it depends. First, it depends on the competition. Today, there are at least 20 African countries that are producing petroleum. The club counts Nigeria, Libya, Angola, Algeria, Egypt, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Mauritania, and the new kid on the block, Malawi, which is producing only 200 barrels uh, uh, per day compared to the millions of the others, um, at least the big boys, Nigeria, Libya, and Angola following. Then there is Uganda, there is Senegal, there is Guinea-Bissau, Kenya, Somalia, Mozambique, Tanzania, who are not yet 
too influential on the energy scene, but are on the radar and need to be watched. Now, it depends on the competition, all right? But it depends more so on ourselves. What we do as a country or what we do not. Now, in terms of the situation as present, Nigeria has pole position. If you're a car race uh, watcher, you know what being in pole position is about. So we're in the lead. We're the leaders in this field. But will we do enough to maintain this lead? Like in all choices we make in life, you know, it can either self-propel you or you become self-destruct. So I would say, in terms of answering the question, it depends, that the future is in our hands. And since I returned to this country, um, back to the country, I still shuttle, you know, in and out, I find a very, depending on the way you look at it, a commendable, but also warring uh, propensity that will become a nation of prayer warriors. And when you ask people, can we do this? Should we do this? They say to you, by the special grace of God. Now, I have nothing against that. Even in football, you ask the Green Eagles coach, shall we win? Incidentally, we lost to Algeria, you know, 0-1 last night. You ask him, shall we win the match? He will tell you by the special grace of God. For goodness sake, the other team is also watched over by God. He's God of all people. You ask the minister for transportation. Will the um, Lagos Ibadan uh, rail line be ready by December, as you said, he says, by the special grace of God. Whether it's electricity, even in, in petroleum production, you ask, can we meet our targets? They tell you, you know, in exploration and production. Still the same answer. But we seem to forget as a people that heaven helps those who help themselves. In fact, very recently on, on, um, on, on channels television, Governor Fashola, the minister, present uh, minister of works, was on uh, a program. I think it's tough talk or something like that. And he said, there is too much God in our national uh, uh, life. We talk about too much God. Why can't we use the intellect he's given to us already? to propel ourselves forward. Let's do something for ourselves and then God will help us to the harm. And that's why it was interesting to hear uh, 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 a pointed question put to us on this occasion of the 60th anniversary of Nigeria's independence. Uh, can we be the hub and can that come in the next 50 years? And that's why I need to congratulate and salute the uh, Society of Petroleum Engineers Nigeria and particularly the chair of the Abuja section 199, Aristotle John Emezi for organizing this uh, particular symposium. Now, often people say, what's in the name? And I was having this conversation with uh, my good friend, uh, Professor Joseph Ajenka, whom you know uh, as the seventh vice chancellor of the University of Potapa. His son, Nemeter, is making waves, breaking all kinds of academic barriers uh, in the United Kingdom. And I called him, I said, what does Nemeter mean? And when he told me, I said, no wonder. The guy is flying. You can't touch him. Now, when this invitation came and I saw Aristotle, 
my mind flipped back to the original Aristotle and the great things is done upon which we base most of our philosophy is even today. So it was very refreshing that with all the doom and gloom, you know, about Nigeria that pervaded the uh, evaluations of Nigeria at 60, it was very refreshing to see another Aristotle come up with an upbeat theme. If you rephrase the theme of this conference, it can become as follows. Can the eagle, which is Nigeria, soar again? Can we fly? Time was when the world referred to us, not ourselves, we didn't claim that. The world referred to us as giants of Africa and for very good reason. Now we seem to have self-doubt. We're asking ourselves, can we soar again? Of course it depends. And to answer that question, we need to scope the future. Indeed, if you don't scope the future, you will get stuck in the past. That's like stating the obvious. And nobody among our competitors, none of these um, countries is awestruck about Nigeria. Time was, if you mentioned Nigeria in Ghana or Lesotho, they'll cower a little bit. Now, no, everybody's, you know, wanting to poke his finger in our eyes. That's the state of things. So everybody's hustling to take that pole position away from us. Now, when we as a nation launched out with the vision 2020, we forgot to request, uh, to request other emerging countries to stand still. We just said it and went back to our individual places, you know, to, <laughs> and went to sleep, literally. And you know this story, you know where we are in respect of that vision. We did very little for ourselves to actualize that laudable vision which we had mapped out for ourselves. Actually, we seem to do everything to sabotage that ambition that we had expressed. Now, for the avoidance of doubt, let me state up front that the road to the sustainable development of our future and its implied prosperity as a country runs squarely through our stack of petroleum resources. And I can almost hear you saying, really? Yes, really, because we seem to have gone to sleep and we're, we're busy, you know, singing, I blessed the day I found you, that's petroleum. But we got to wake up because apart from being blessed with petroleum, nature has also play, uh, 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 placed us in a very strategic position. Um, Aristotle just mentioned the herb, the, the centrality implied in the concept of a herb. Now, if you take a look at this global map, you see where Africa is, almost at the center of the world. And you see particularly where our country Nigeria is, very well positioned as um, a, a technocrat and diplomat in the service of the United Nations for, for about 20 years. During the discussions of uh, the future of Africa, colleagues used to say, hey, Chidi, you guys are lucky. You strategically placed, you know, as a hub. What do you think of aviation? You think about the shipping lane to all the strategic areas of the world who seem to be centrally placed to serve that role. Now, if you zero in on Africa itself, we are almost equidistant to the north. If you look at the tape there, Tunisia, to the south, South Africa, across towards the east to 
Kenya, uh, Somalia, Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa. And up there to Egypt, the Red Sea area, before then you cross into the Middle East. So nature has not only endowed us with enormous resources to play the role of a herd, it's placed us in a strategic location to facilitate that role. Could any country ask for more? I don't know. And when I said that our future will be anchored on our petroleum resources uh, at the Nigerian Content Board uh, Symposium on 30th uh, November, 2018, there were a lot of questions. People were saying, okay, in terms of what we know and all the worries now about carbonization or decarbonization, isn't that a contradiction, sir? And I said, no. No, because the first law of nature is self-preservation. Put in very banal terms, you use what you have to get what you want. So nature has blessed us with petroleum and we should make no apologies for anchoring our development on petroleum resource while also engaging in other pursuits. And the next question was, how about, you know, us being signatories uh, to the Paris um, Climate Agreement of 2015? And I said, no worries. Look, where they, in, they had the um, 2018 uh, Conference of Parties of the uh, Climate Agreement, uh, Katowice in Poland is the coal burning capital of the world. But they hosted the climate change conference. Do you see a contradiction there? No, they're using what they have while engaging themselves, you know, in the debate for the future. They're using what they have to get where they want. Um, you look at Germany that is hosting the climate change um, uh, convention in Bonn. They just opened very recently, just a few years ago, one of the most sophisticated coal power plants with no apologies to anybody. You look at Australia, they're burning coal, not even petroleum or natural gas. Um, anywhere you turn in Europe, the Netherlands, the big powers, China, India. So it comes down to using what you have to get where you want. While, of course, being part of the global discussions, the better future. And they said to me, what about the move to renewable energy? Now I teach renewable energy technologies as um, Haji Amina would tell you, as part of the course uh, we give in energy economics. Now renewables, we say, represent the future. But the reality is that that future is quite far off. Why? Because the most promising uh, uh, sources within the renewable park are fraught with a lot of um, uh, hurdles to cross. For example, if you take sun, solar, and you take wind, you, you find that there's an issue of intermittency. These are variable uh, renewables and that the, the, the problem of hooking them up to conventional uh, uh, power grids, quite enormous. And so we're not there yet. And that's why a big country like the US of all the hula blue about renewables, they're still a niggardly 10, 11, possibly 12% of their energy source. So they're steaming ahead with what they have with petroleum, that's oil, gas, nuclear, and whatever, and then renewables. They said, how about they keep the petroleum in the ground movement? Are we not scared that that might come to reality? 
And I said to them, God forgive these set of people for they know not what they do, particularly our countrymen that have joined this chorus. Why? Because if you look at the IOCs or the FOCs, the foreign oil companies, in their boardrooms, they are debating and projecting the place of oil and gas in the next, uh, for the next 50 years, for the next 75 years. There are different scenarios. And if you look at the 2000, I mean, uh, the 50 year scenario, which is part of the theme of this conference, you find that they've established that uh, by uh, 2050 and beyond that oil energy mix of the world. You know, I think it's, it's something like 30% um, uh, for gas and then 25% for oil. So this